Hello all, Game Methuselah. Well, I have to do an apology video. I had promised you guys a Mambo, and Saturday I decided, hey, I'm going to do a Mambo tomorrow, and I went to start setting it up and realized I had a huge problem. You see, the reason I don't do more Mambos is my cats think that my dungeon tiles are really interesting places to sleep. I guess they like crawling into the dungeons and having a great time. The problem is they tend to knock things over, leave fur all over the place, and they find that anything that is pitchable to get on the floor, they do that. So I had a great idea. I was going to set up a table in my office here, and that way I could control the lighting and do monster mambos from here and also control the feline entrance because this is sort of a semi-cat-free zone. It was a great idea. I came in, I started to clear out the debris because... Those of you who do not know, most of my house is storage. The one thing that happens to you over many decades is you accumulate a lot of crap. And we've accumulated more than our fair share. It's great. One cool thing is nice. A hundred cool things is fabulously nice. 20,000 cool things is a pain in the butt. And that's kind of where I'm at. And I thought what I'm going to do right before we get started here is quickly organize my figures and make them more accessible, find out what I want to paint, what I want to sell, what I want to sort of give away. Um, that was a huge job. Um, I have been doing that now for four days. Now, they're four sangria-laden days, so they're not real full days, and they're corona days, which just basically means it's either day or night, and I'm never really sure what day it is. But I've been basically doing this, just organizing figures. Now, I'm going to stop and show you some of this just on the humor value. And then um, I'll show you sort of how the table's going to look. And then hopefully I will be able to get to a Mambo later this week. And I think what I'm going to do is not just a monster, monster Mambo. I want to do an adventure Mambo. I want to show you how the versimilitude of gaming really helps when you set up everything. First time you play Dungeons and Dragons, oh, you're excited just because you're playing. If you sit down and you got your character sheet and some dice, you're talking to your friends, it was the best gaming experience you have. Yeah. Once you've done that 10 times, you need a little bit more. Well, I'll get my miniature painted. Maybe somebody will have a board. You know, maybe even some maps. And that's how the game evolves. After four decades, you've evolved into tiles and maps and miniatures and trees and all kinds of peripheral things that I have. It slows the game down, but it really sets the stage for making the game interesting and allowing you to suspend the disbelief and really enjoy role playing. And that's kind of what I want to show you and why I do Mambo is more than just showing you a map and saying, you know, do this, do that, do something else. It's kind of nice to see it all laid out and how it should look um, when I get done with it. And the neat thing about it here, which I didn't want to do too much in the solarium, is I can start bringing out all my greebly and set it up, you know. And those things are, are, are more delicate and, and less cat friendly. So it'll be a little easier. But I'll get on this right away. So enjoy taking a look at some of this stuff. It's kind of amazing how much junk you accumulate over the years. So this is my main paint table and actually looks fairly organized for me. Um, but I wanted to just give you a chance to see how it looks. This is what's been going on. Now, I found this ooh, really cool 70s vintage dragon. I can't wait to like touch it up and paint it up and do it again. So that'll be great. I found these neat sarcophagus. They're stone and I had dry brushed them at some point to make them look like stone. But inside one of them has coins and the like. And this one has an undead of some sort that is um, not painted yet. But I, the idea, I thought this would be really fun. You could put these in your dungeon and people could look in them. Obviously, the empty ones are empty. You could find the magical treasure, or you could find some horrible wraith that comes out and attacks you. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, I have an area over here which had my area where I keep my miniatures in queue to be painted. Sort of my modern stuff. Things that need to be painted. A lot of elves, uh, a lot of interesting fey-type creatures and stuff, so I can be using them for my Albion game. Just things I really like and want to paint. Uh, they've been sort of buried by a lot of other things now, and I have hopefully will get it uncovered here enough to... Um, to get back to that. These drawers up here were sort of semi-empty, but now they're filled to the gunnels with all kinds of really cool figures. Some of them are really, really old. I found three blisters of Heritage 1977 trolls sealed still in their blisters. Obviously more than four decades old, waiting to, to do something. I'm guessing these things will end up on eBay or it's just crazy. Going over to where the table is going to be my table. I'll hopefully take a shot of it here in a few minutes after I pull a lot of this stuff back. But this is the thing that happens when you've been painting for 40 years. See this tray right here? 
These are things I sort of started. I don't know why I quit. Lost interest, stopped playing the game, didn't need them, found 75 others that I had, and they're sort of now sitting in this tray. I'm likely going to put them into my repair box. I have an entire three-drawer box just filled with broken and things that need to be fixed. Um, and every once in a while I go through it. I'll, maybe I'll show that to you some other time. And, and you can see odds and ends that need to be fixed. Other things like this lead sinker dragon. I mean, it's sure heavy. I found this old Games Workshop Undead Dragon. Well, I already have one of these fully painted. I don't know what the heck I would do with another one, but I must have gotten it at some point. I thought I'd give these little plastic ones to Steve Keys here, these little elves. He'd become a master painter with them. There are some neat greebly that I picked up on eBay years ago. A little, little forest pieces to add to your map. I'll show you some of those things later. I've got a whole set of fanatics for a Games Workshop game that I don't play anymore. But I think they would make great little evil priests or good priests or whatnot. These miniatures here are all different sets of magnetized miniatures ready to be painted. I'll see if I can open a couple of these and show you them as well. This one is even more intriguing to me. By the way, all these boxes you see lying about here on the floor, these metal boxes, these are all painted boxes. This one and this one here are two of my monster boxes. I should go through those and show you things. This tray, this box, this box, this box, these are all D&D Zero figures. These are all mid-early 70s figures. I don't think anything in there is newer than 1977. I've been going through all of these, trying to figure out what to do with them. I have tons and tons of figures. You know, a lot of them, I don't know whether I'm going to get painted, but they're here. And now that I at least have them somewhat organized, my miniature boxes, all filled with miniatures, some games, some other things I'm trying to find a home for. New paint set. Someday I may use it. Uh, there's my fantasy trip. More miniature boxes. Well, at least one miniature box, plus other just pieces that I need to, to dump. Look, World Book Encyclopedia. I cannot imagine anybody has ever even seen an encyclopedia, let alone opened one in 30 years. This is also a scary. This is a closet for this room. See all the boxes in here? All the things going around. Oh, I have found tons of G.I. Joes. Actually, these are dragons. They're sort of G.I. Joe knockoffs. Uh, they're kind of cool. All these boxes, rules, and more than half of them are miniatures. I'm trying to figure out how long it would take me to paint them all. Some bolt action stuff that I'm working on right now. Some stuff that I found for Warhammer 40k Epic that some of it I sold. Um, more likely sell it all eventually since I haven't played it in more likely 25 years. It's just what happens when you accumulate figures year after year. So you can see how the insanity has set in, but I'm getting over it. Hopefully we'll be able to get all this organized as quickly as possible. And after this weekend is passed and whatever great adventures I'm doing, um, I will get out there and show you this adventure mambo. I really want to set up something where you can see a start from finish adventure, kind of how I put, draw it out. And more importantly, how I talk about it while we're playing it. And that's sort of important. I think a lot of people who've asked me, you know, they're always asking me, how do I do things to make them feel a certain way? And maybe I'll be able to show you some of that. Um, at least I'll try. Um, I'm really not a voice kind of guy. So, you know, as you watch stuff, you always have to understand. Um, great game masters are not necessarily people like uh, Matt Mercer. He is a voice actor and a real actor. These guys have skill sets that obviously normal mortals do not have. Um, a lot of things are more like Matt Coville. I mean, Matt is a good DM. He preps and, and does a lot of things. He writes, he makes rules. You guys already always know what he does. Um, but he's usually consistent and he puts together a great game. And a great game is something that keeps coming. Uh, my friend Don Hawthorne is a lot like that. I mean, it's very meticulously laid out. Where I know the people who have watched me realize I'm more of a Celtic bard. I kind of take things sometimes a little more seat of the pants. I depend on my good prep work to keep me through it. But, you know, that works or doesn't work depending upon, you know, my skill set and my mindset at the time. But this is what goes on. I will get on this as quick as possible. In the meantime, I'm more likely to stop and paint some miniatures. But that, unfortunately, is just a risk people have to take when I'm this close to paintbrushes. So until I have a chance to speak with you again, you know my motto, and paint on.